What's up? How's it going, everyone? All right, I gotta give my note cards, otherwise I'll forget to uh, give thanks. But first off, give it up to Richard, uh, wherever he's at. There you go. Uh, so Richard is the voice of Arnie Termi Terminator of uh, this film. It's actually his first voice acting gig ever, and he crushed it. So we're so blessed to have Richard on our team. So shout out to Richard. That was awesome. As you may or may not already know, my name is Nan Perez. I am a film director, a creative technologist, and the founder of Storyblocker Studios. I'm Sway Molina, artist, actor, filmmaker, and one of the executive producers for our 2T. Our T2 remake. You don't know that by now? No, yeah, it's a tongue twister. All right, so first off, I just wanted to thank you all for being here. This is incredible. We actually sold out this venue. Uh, we're actually over capacity, so that's Woo! fucking awesome. So thank you so much for being here. Um, I also want to give thanks to the New Art Theater for helping us out during this process. Um, shout out to uh, Jim and Julian for helping uh, get this movie up on screen. Yeah. I also have some thanks because... <laughs> I forgot to put them in the credits, so I'm just going to give them thanks right now. So shout out to Ted Hayden. T Ted cut the trailer that some of you might have seen, so he did a phenomenal job. There he is back there. Shout out to Ted. Thank you, Ted. Thank you, Ted. Uh, thank you to Fingadelic Music. Uh, Fingadelic Music made the opening theme song for the movie. He mixed the movie. He voiced John Connor, and his wife voiced Sarah Connor. So he did a lot for the movie, so shout out to Fingadelic. Uh, shout out to Todd Terrazas. Uh, uh, Todd uh, runs AI uh, LA, and he's co-hosting this, uh, this, this event with me. So thank you, Todd, for all your guidance. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Give it to Todd. Come on, Todd. Thank you. If you're an artist in this, in this movie, can you stand up really quick? I just want to give a special thanks to the artists. They're in the back. Some are here. So... Yeah, so it's funny, we only have like three artists here, but you know, our artists are global, right? We yeah, got people from all, all over the world. Like, yeah, we got people from London, Paris, Australia, Japan, Japan, Berlin. Cincinnati. <laughs> so yeah, uh, they couldn't be here with us tonight, but they're going to join us on the live stream this Saturday. So if you're interested in talking to them, they'll be there. Uh, thank you to Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy Boxer is going to be hosting the Q&A after this. Um, so thank you so much, and then big, big special thanks to my wife, Yumi, who has been producing this whole event. She's over there in the back. She's a rock star. She's been uh, running around Los Angeles collecting t-shirts and stickers and whatnot, so. Um, so yeah, for, uh, first off, let me introduce Storyblocker to you, Storyblocker Studios. So that's a company that I founded. Storyblocker Studios is a film, mobile film technology company. And our mission statement is to empower young filmmakers to use the type of tools that James Cameron had, but at a really uh, affordable cost. And uh, you know, giving our mission statement is to give access to everyone. So Storyblocker incorporates artificial intelligence, augmented reality, 3D, all kinds of technology, all in your pocket. So it's pretty incredible. And uh, Storyblocker Studios is a full production company. We help agencies, production companies, uh, figure out AI. And we do that by doing uh, trailers, concept art, what have you. We just help them visualize their stories. We've been doing a lot of that work here in Hollywood. So that's that's a little bit about Storyblocker Studio. Yeah, we can download it, right? Yeah, you can download it now. There's a QR code, or you can go on the App Store and you can download Storyblocker if you want, or not. <laughs> download it. Give it a shot. So really quickly, I just wanted to um, let you all know about this journey, you know? Um, we started this movie about six months ago, yeah. last summer. Um, September. September of last year. Um, it's really funny, I was actually on vacation um, in the middle of nowhere in a beach in Egypt. And I had this quirky idea, really, um, it was inspired by watching the community, um, watching these amazing trailers or concept films or short films. And you know, I just asked myself like, can someone make a feature film using this technology? Um, and that's, that's what we answered here today, so we're, we're going to find out. Um, we, yeah, so we really wanted to challenge ourselves to just only use this technology to make a feature film. So you'll, you'll see that later on. Yeah. <clears throat> Next card. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so why does this film exist? 
like, why did we choose Terminator 2 out of all movies to remake? And um, yeah, so why, why did we do this instead of, uh, why did we make a teddy bear? Or why, uh, yeah, just why? The reason why is because, um, you know, during the time when I started this, it was in the middle of the writer strike. You know, I myself am a film director. Sway is an actor. I wasn't and, working. Yeah, that we were out of work. And we were also like really exploring this AI community. And while the media was just painting negative images about AI, we saw a complete opposite story within the community. And we saw the community really embracing these tools and creating incredible art, like the trailers that you saw earlier. And it just wasn't fair that, you know, the only thing that people were talking about is this Skynet scenario, right? This end of the world, doomsday, the world's gonna end. And so we wanted to change the narrative. We wanted to make this film so that when you watch it, you can see the community that embraced this technology. And the next time you're at a conference and someone says something about Skynet and the end of the world, you can come back to them and say, actually, you know what? AI brought a community together. So that's, yeah. that's the meaning of this movie. Um, it's kind of self-aware in that way, and um, you put it nicely. Yeah, um, the way I like to see it is this film, to us, at least to me, this is like a love letter you know, to AI and what AI was in 2023, which we'll witness today, the early technology, the early AI. It's really impressive where we're going with it now. Yeah, so you're going to see, like I said, we started this, this project uh, back in September, and the, the tools have evolved every month. It's something new, some new advancements. And you're going to see early AI in here. You're going to see some really advanced AI. And we wanted to keep all that because it's kind of, it kind of feels like a time capsule, right? Um, I'm just curious here, like, who here has heard of Sora? Holy crap. Yeah. OK, you've all heard of Sora. So think of this as a time capsule pre-Sora, right? This is not Sora, though. This is not Sora. We don't have access yet. Um, and again, we wanted to change the narrative. And we wanted to just make sure that you know, I truly don't believe that AI is going to destroy Hollywood. I think that these films are going to live on their own. Um, I think that what we're seeing here is a new medium happen. You know, thank you. Yeah, yeah, fucking clap for that. Yeah, yeah. That's, you know, I, you know, movies aren't going anywhere. Actors aren't going anywhere. Um, it's just going to be a new thing. And so I hope everyone here embraces it. And. Um, Hopefully you can see that uh, this film is by the community and for the community. All right, <laughs> so <laughs> let's, set up, uh, let's set up some expectations here, right? So hopefully some of you aren't here to watch a remake of Terminator. <laughs> Just far from it, guys. Because uh, we didn't really quite do that. Uh, so this is an experimental film. Highly experimental. Highly experimental film using experimental technology in its Highly movies. experimental. <laughs> Sorry, I just want to set the expectation. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we collaborated with 50 artists, right? And the way that we did it is we sliced the film up into 50 chunks, sort of like an exquisite corpse, where one artist would do scene one, then scene two, then scene three, and then we would stitch it all together at the end. So you can imagine how fucking chaotic that could be. Um, and so we, we also set guidelines for every artist, right? Um, they weren't allowed to use any footage from the original film. They weren't allowed to use any music from the original film. It had to be completely original, right? They couldn't just take a scene and just like run a Gen 2 on top yeah, of it or something. Yeah, couldn't take you know? one voice and train his voice. You couldn't do any of that. Yeah, so, but you're gonna see scenes from the movie. And the reason why that happened, that happened in post-production after the movie was done. And that was just to help the audience figure out, okay, where am I in the story? Because it's fucking weird, right? Um, so we put some scenes in the movie, but keep in mind the artist did not do that, okay? We did that to help you out. Um, you're also gonna see on the bottom left hand um, the artist's name, so that you know that which artist you're looking at at that time, right? Um, this is all about the artist. It's all about showcasing the artist, so we wanted to make sure that that was front and center. Um, so, like I said, you know, this is opening up a whole new medium, and we have 50 artists, but we also have uh, something special that's been played before the movie. Um, one of our fellow AI artists, uh, Dave Clark, who's in the building. Shout out to Dave. Dave, why don't you come up here? Uh, Dave's gonna showcase uh, his short film, Another. It's the world premiere of this short film. 
Um, he worked really hard on it, and he's doing some really, really interesting things in this space. Um, and he can probably explain it better than I can. So Dave's going to come up on here and...